that I don't, I didn't look like, you know, you can tell if I'm armed. All these cut pine trees and stuff. <clears throat> who owns it? I don't know who owns it. Well, we're here not far from where I live in Bozeman, and we brought along old Lucky here, Bart May. Bart hasn't been in an episode for about five or six years. He's my neighbor, and now he's gonna go lead us up the trail. He said, right here on the onyx is where the big bucks are. So, I got the tag. Bart's got an elk tag, I got a deer tag. We'll see how it goes. We got Marshall and Marcus to haul them out, so we ought to find one. You ready? All right, I'm ready. All right, I'm following you. <laughs> Seen a few deer tracks crossing. Yeah. They're here. Big Hank, who we're looking for. Big Hank, November 9th. November 9th would be a good day to shoot a deer. Got a single bell. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate him breaking trail already. Yeah, that was nice of him. Well, we're just about where we put our shoulder to the grade here and gain this last 600 feet. We're on a hike. We've been hiking all morning. But in the meantime, the llamas are putting on the feed bag. There's another moose coming out right up there, way up. Dan, you see him? Yeah, I'm on him. I think it's a bull, yeah. Yeah. One horn. One horn? Yeah. Huh. That's a tough existence. Yeah. All these critters have a tough existence. I turned 54 on Monday. I turned 45 in January. You do? Oh. So now I'm 54 years old in four days. And <clears throat> that 54 mile marker is now in my rear view mirror. And can't put it in reverse, never get to see it again. <laughs> <clears throat> or that 53, I guess, 53 to 54. But in that mile marker, I had a lot of really good hunts. Yeah. A bison, a doll sheep, 
Sitka blacktail, Alaska black bear, New Mexico elk, caught a bunch of walleyes. And now you're towing me up the hill. <laughs> no. Because you're in such good shape. No. I'm just tagging along. Back when I was in my 30s, 55 seemed really old. Yeah. In a year, I'm going to be 55. AARP, looking for some sponsorship here, AARP. <laughs> All right, let's go find them. Where, where all these red trees are, he's gonna, he'll show up, he's just high up in there. Couldn't tell how big he had one good, really good fork, but he might be just a big three point. I should make three point. Oh, where is he? No. Okay, just keep watching in the timber movement. Yeah, there he is, right? Do they get up there? I don't think we've spooked them. You lead the way. You know where we're going. They may not be feeding over the top. It's just, it's just old dead growth. No, I... This hillside's really good. I can here. see him. The back of a doe right there. Well, this is the fourth time I've had this tag. The previous three times I had the whole season to hunt. And I ended up not shooting a buck up here. I'd pass and pass and pass. And then I'd go shoot a whitetail. Well, this time I only have probably three days to hunt. What you get here is you have decent buck to doe ratios because it's a limited entry unit and you have a little less hunting pressure. That's, I mean, you could go to other parts of Montana and shoot bigger bucks and you're gonna shoot in here. Oh yeah. No doubt about that, but it's 15 miles from my doorstep. It's cool country. And I got three days to do it, so. <laughs> What more could I ask for? So what I say we do, Bart, you loop us around here, this spot you think they might be. We go back to the llamas, we eat a snicker bar, and then we climb up the ridge and we go get some better footage of that other one. Okay. That work? That tempt you. Tempt me. Oh, it's not, trust me, it's not gonna take much <laughs> temptation to get me to I shoot something. You might be hard pressed to find one better. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. I'm following you. <laughs> Bucks tend to hang up here before the rut. This terrain above me. And then they move down. And today's November 9th. I don't know if they'll be down with the does or still moving back and forth or what. Kind of a bummer, this this unit used to be a really good deer unit. Bart's family, they lived here when he was a kid and they shot some really nice bucks in here. Over time, I suspect the habitat change just has become a lot less conducive to deer. You think of how much these forests have matured in the last 30 years. Makes for for tough conditions for deer when they don't have this really good habitat that's always regenerating. So, I don't know if it'll ever be a good deer unit again. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up this ridge. We saw a buck pushing four or five does. 
when they came up to this saddle. We're gonna go up this ridge, make a loop around him, and shoot him in his bed. We saw a group of does on the way in that had a buck with them. We snuck up above them, and now we see three does right behind us about 100 yards. But we can't locate the buck. I'll play shells out. He's down. He just went down. He just went down. I'm sure that was him going down. It was him, but I don't know if he went down, down, down. Well, no, he, he was standing there like this. And then he went. This is so lucky, folks. I can't even tell you. My liver is about ready to come unwound right now. And um, Bart saw that buck get up and then it bedded. And it came around this side of the tree. And he was bedded looking right at me. So my view, he was bedded like this from the camera and I just held right there. But I don't know if you saw what I did. I used my my trekking pole and I laid it across this shoulder, like right here. And then I just put the weight of my rifle on it. And it was dead solid. But I, I couldn't tell at the report of the rifle because all this snow came well, he, just, he jumped up and then he, he kind of wheeled to us and faced right. us and then he stumbled. I think he rolled and yeah. then he got up and was like, oh crap. No, I, that last thing, he's standing there looking at the doe and she's looking at him like, Fred, you ain't looking good. <laughs> he's not huge, he's just a heavy, nice three point buck. I'm as poorly as I feel right now, I'm so happy to have that chance. Big Trapper was looking out for me, Bart. Oh, Big Trapper. <laughs> I heard him call him that. Oh, that's at my grandpa's house.
always call them when the big trapper calls. You're just done. You're heading to Boot Hill. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We came up here. We knew we had a short window. And the window's getting shorter by the day, by the hour. He's. I didn't expect to shoot a humongous buck up here. The fact that we came all the way to the top where you said they'd be. You said they'd be right here. <laughs> Well, let's go over there. Yeah. Awesome. I know he's, I'm, if he is not dead, I'm, I've missed my Where guess. Were you he was bedded looking kind of at me. Oh, I it? put it right there. I'll follow you. What's, is there an easier way? Probably around this way. Oh, this way? Okay. Wedged in a tree. Yeah. You see right there. Back, uh, back. Okay. I'm really happy with him. I don't think he's a young one. <laughs> no, he's not a young deer at all. I think he's on his way down, probably. Huh. Not a single drop of blood. How crazy is that? That's a big bodied buck. Yeah, it is. That is not a young deer. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Buck. Thank you. Yeah, he, I not, teeth wise, he's not that old. He's cool looking though. He's a big old boy. I don't think he was ever going to be anything more than that. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's that? I said they used to be hot spots, now they're just spots. A lot of them in there. Yeah. 490 feet. I just remember the switchback's a good loading spot too. Uh, it's, it was wide. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Then you're not mm -hmm. tight on the. Okay. It seemed like we had it was kind of carved out pretty good. Well, looks to me like you got him going, Bart. Well, he's gonna go. <laughs> Montana double date. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the pleasure and enjoyment of this is I say it many times in today's living proof that I have been blessed with some of the greatest friends in the world. Bart may be in one of them. And to shoot this deer when Bart was here come to a spot that he's always known about. I, I couldn't get any more pleasure out of this tag than what I just got today. Days like today cause you to think about the bigger picture. I live in the greatest country in the world. I was born into a hunting family. And I get to come out and hunt these public lands anytime I have the tag and the desire to do it. I, if you can tell me a greater blessing in life than what I have to live here, live in the United States, hunt all this great stuff, have great friends and family to share it with, I know the answer to that. There is no greater blessing. I gotta go get the llamas and loop around this ridge and meet Bart down on the trail. Get your saddle here, Marshall.
wasn't too worried about how tight it was this morning because it didn't have any weight on. Looks like he got hit about where I was. Is that where it went in or do you think it came out there? I don't know. They're just different looking. They're blacker. And... Well, thanks to my buddy Bart May, Bad Bart, whatever we want to call him. We hiked for three hours, got up here, found a mule deer buck that just suited me fine. And now we got our llamas loaded and we got about, what, three miles to the truck? Yeah. Downhill. Sorry, folks. Some days it's just a one day hunt. And uh, today is one of those days. Wish we had more content for you, but I'm not feeling that great. I gotta go and rest. I gotta get these llamas back to Idaho. And then I gotta go to Wyoming for my son, Matthew, his elk tag. We left when it was dark. We got back when it was dark. Seems like everything we do is a headlamp operation. Long hike, in and out. But thanks for watching. It was worth it for us to come and do this. I hope it was worth it for you to stick around and see my one day Montana mule deer hunt. Good luck out there. <laughs>